A little over a year ago, we shared the story surrounding a mysterious discovery that was once claimed to have been made deep within cave systems within Ecuador, which some believe were originally man-made. A discovery that, although now concealed from the world, was photographed, studied, and documented thanks to the array of artifacts which had been amassed by an individual known as Father Crespi. An entire, seemingly alien metallic library, complete with hundreds of sheets of gold, platinum, and other precious metals, hammered out to reveal an astonishing unknown language, clearly left by a people of tremendous capabilities. The caves in which this find is claimed to have been made is known as Cueva de los Teos. And although such discovery is denied by the Ecuadorian authorities, the Ecuadorian and, interestingly, United Kingdom's governments funded an extensive search of the cave systems soon after the claims became public. It attracted the attention of numerous individuals who traveled into the depths of these caves, including Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. What we wish to focus on this video, however, is the enormous, seemingly man-made caverns which are found to be within the cave systems. We feel, if these cave systems are indeed one day admitted, as having been artificially hewn from the bedrock, then this would undeniably reveal tremendous flaws in academia's claims as to the geology and indeed true history of the area. The cave system is so enormous, it has yet to be fully explored by modern man. Yet what has been explored has revealed highly compelling features, which corroborate earlier claims of an artificial origin. The Moritza portal, for example, named after Juan Moritza, the individual who claims to have originally discovered the metallic library, is clearly of an artificial nature. The question is, why go to such lengths to construct this natural-looking cave system? Was it all created merely to hide this library? And if so, how important could the information held within be? And why did such a find attract the attention of the first man on the moon? Did the astronaut know something we are yet to discover? Juan Moritza signed affidavit dated 8th of July 1969, in which he confessed to a meeting with the Ecuadorian president where he received complete control over his discovery, provided he could provide photographic evidence and an independent witness corroborating the discovery. When Moritza met with von Däniken in 1972, he took him to a secret entrance, through which they entered a large artificial hall within the cave system. Apparently, von Däniken never got to see the library itself. He wrote in his book, The Gold of the Gods, Quote, the passages all form perfect right angles. Sometimes they are narrow, sometimes wide. The walls are smooth and often seem to be polished. The ceilings are flat and at times look as if they were covered with a kind of glaze. My doubts about the existence of the underground tunnels vanished as if by magic, and I felt tremendously happy. Moritza said passages like those extended for hundreds of miles under the soils of Ecuador and Peru." End quote. We feel the question now is, who went to these unimaginable efforts so far back within history? Why create such a place deep within the Earth with such an intended illusion of natural origin if you did not seek to hide something? Many still believe that the truth is still hidden deep inside its unexplored caverns a truth that will force us to completely rewrite the history of mankind. Are the legends true surrounding Cuevo de los Teos? Did it once indeed contain an ancient metallic library, left to us by an ancient civilization? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling. We have in the past covered the fascinating legends and indeed recovered artifacts that have been found over the years within the Ecuadorian cave system, known locally as Cueva de los Tayos. The legends of the cave nearly all surround hidden treasures of lost, ancient, and giant civilizations, 
including the posit of an ancient yet inexplicable library room made entirely from a curious metallic formula. With caves with an intrigue strong enough to even attract the attention of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, one began to wonder whether these legends be true. And when you bring Father Crespi's collection into the fold, the flurry of interest surrounding these legends, and indeed the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, all become easily explainable via such motives of discovery. Father Crespi, as the title would suggest, was a religious man and one who was highly philanthropic and also incredibly interested in the artifacts of antiquity. And fortunately for him and us, the location in which he lived was steeped in lost ancient artifacts, all just waiting to be recovered. Father Crespi was a man of modest wealth, and in return for curious artifacts, often found within the Taos cave, even reported to have given food in return for clear forgeries, offered by hungry individuals, although he would offer more and often money respective of the artifact's clearly historical value. This allowed Father Crespi to gather a literal hoard of authentic ancient artifacts, many clearly from this long claim to exist metallic library, his collection full of metallic plates of unknown writings and other fascinating metallic artifacts. The reason for our revisiting of these caves and indeed the fascinating character that was Father Crespi, is our recent perusing of new information released on the cave, deliberately ignoring all aforementioned facts, including the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, in particular at entrances, as if reinforced with enormous ancient lintels. Unfortunately, all that remains of Father Crespi's collection that can be confirmed as 100% his and authentic, now only exist within the photos taken of him with his collection prior to his death, whereas the hoard of artifacts was ransacked and many replaced with poor quality forgeries. Thus, it is a mystery, and we believe conspiracy to conceal a lost history, which we find incredibly frustrating. It is now a well-known, heavily studied fact that the modern-day bird was once a very different-looking animal, evolution in the form of a radical transformational adaptation, forced upon them by gradual changes in the Earth's environment, from which they whence came, that being the dinosaur. We now know this to be fact, thanks to modern technology. Our capability to now scan these fossils some found remarkably well-preserved, still fortunately containing many things which have allowed us to discover that dinosaurs had bird brains, or more accurately, birds have dinosaur brains. With current investigations even shining light upon the reality that many of these gigantic animals, including the T-Rex, once had manes made of feathers. This drastic change from the dinosaur resulting in the vast array of creatures we see today, from the ostrich to the albatross, even to the commonly domesticated budgerigar. Yet they all share one common trait, a significant reduction in their size. Even animals which survived unchanged, such as the crocodile, still shrank considerably. This shrinking of said species having been demanded of them by environmental changes. Evolutionary adaptation as we have covered in the past, is, in the channel's opinion, in its true sense, an adaptation of specific sets of vertebrate types, the true definition of species, not as Darwinian theory posits, of leaps between such. Thus, evolution witnessed within the animal kingdom is not indicative of a shared single ancestry, but inseparable branching from specific vertebrae or phyla groups never proven to have leaped from one to another. As such, modern-day birds could in fact be seen as the product of de-evolutionary adaptation, possibly derived from cataclysm, which deprived them of the resources needed to remain at such gigantic sizes. 
The reason for this digression is the channel's postulation of this same process, having once possibly occurred to Homo sapiens also. Could this explain why some of the oldest ruins are also some of the most advanced, with many remaining beyond the reach of modern man's ability to understand them? Is it possible that man once had a much higher intellect than us today, due to a far greater sized cranium? Simply put, were we once giants, just as modern-day birds were once dinosaurs? Legends and accounts of ancient giants can be found all over the world, also featuring in many ancient religious teachings. Additionally, many of the still unexplained sites of Earth regularly feature doorways many feet, sometimes even meters above that which is required by and for humans of our modern scale. The Terracotta Army, for example, is believed by many independent researchers, including Mystery History, to have been made by a lost civilization, and their average height, intriguingly, is much taller than modern man. Many accounts exist of giants, which share similar descriptive characteristics. Red hair, double rowed teeth, elongated skulls, etc. With many accounts of red-headed giant remains actually discovered and excavated all over the world, yet often all that survives of these reported events is a small news article, regularly noting Smithsonian involvement in said recoveries, yet seemingly and conveniently always slipping away from the public domain. Lovelock Cave being another example, locals tell of it once being the home of a group of red-headed giants, which was eventually blocked and the giants burnt alive, a giant handprint still visible on a rock in the cave presumably made by one of these individuals during their unpleasant demise. Yet what has to be the most compelling piece of evidence, fortunately still in view to suggest giants did indeed once exist, are footprints found all over the globe, once laid down upon sediment, now fossilized into solid stone. These footprints range in size up to a few meters in length indicating that humans, at some point in the distant past, may have been even larger than many dinosaur species. We find the evidence to support the hypothesis of giant ancient humans highly compelling. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming. Yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle, which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference, revealing for the first time in well over 2,000 years just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were, a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet how this was done and with what are questions which, we find, hugely intriguing. 
There are a surprising number of historical anomalies, which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages, a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not. With the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community. A controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement. Rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present, all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974, when a Glenn Daniel, professor of archaeology at Cambridge University, took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affair's artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important, and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel Affair highly compelling. One of the more obscure and personal favorite uparts of mystery history is a small yet incredibly special unique figurine. Dated to the Stone Age, yet regardless of this extraordinary antiquity, this hollow figurine remaining unopened and unbroken for so long, interestingly, rattled. After a delicate extraction procedure was undertaken, a metallic ball was found inside. A sphere, which due to the aforementioned age of said upart, should simply not exist. Yet, after further research, we have discovered that this unique figure wasn't a singular anomaly as we first presumed, but was actually part of a collection of equally puzzling artifacts, some of equally unexplainable characteristics. We now know it was found amongst a collection by locals mining for gold in Sierra Leone. They are now known as the anomaly figures. The statues are now attributed to a number of varying legends in Sierra Leone. Dating from 17,000 BC, some believe that angels who once lived in the heavens 
were, as a punishment for causing bad behavior, turned into humans and sent to Earth. A legend uncannily similar of certain fallen angel theories. The anomaly figures are thusly thought to serve as representations of those entities, and were cast as a reminder of how they were banished from the heavens to Earth to live as humans. There are many strange hybrid interpretations within the collection. It includes animals such as monkeys, elephants, lizards, among other curiosities, some also depicted as giants. Quote, While the figures are varied in shape and time, they are uniform in appearance, indicative of a common purpose. That purpose remains unknown, however. The figures were part of a Temni culture and tradition. But that, upon invasion by the Mendi, the tradition was lost and the civilization displaced to other locations. With so many questions and uncertainties, it is unknown if we will ever have definitive answers as to the dating, origins, and purpose of the anomaly figures. For now, they remain a magnificent representation of the ancient civilizations that preceded those that now live in Sierra Leone." End quote. Asserted curator Frederick Lamp. We find the entire collection, especially our previously covered Upart's metallic sphere, highly compelling.